Remember when they called it surfing? Just surfing. Well, now they call it longboarding. But it doesn't really matter what you call it, it's still a lot of fun, and Malibu's still a great place to do it. Kick out the limits, walk on air. The long point wave lends itself to smooth rides. Crowds paddling out teach you to turn like a slalom skier. The inside was created for nose riding. Two on a wave is nothing new, even if the guy on the shoulder becomes a body surfer. Malibu's played to standing room only crowds forever, it seems. It stayed the same, and it's changed. Once considered an endangered species, style. Basically, riding a longboard is a traditional art. No jerk butt Watusi mashed potato hand jive here. Keep the upper body quiet. Walk, never shuffle. One well orchestrated ride from takeoff to kick out. Known to his friends as Slick, Chris Slickmeyer knows all about nose riding and style. It's taken him a long time to get this good. He gets to the nose and rarely backpedals. When I'm surfing, when I'm surfing, when I'm surfing, I don't like to hear about news from day to day. When I'm surfing, when I'm surfing, when I'm surfing. A lot of surfers get to the nose. Slick rides the nose. You, you, you. I must admit it's not the whole thing. Won't let one thing on my mind. Watch the way he climbs and drops on the tip in the pocket. Hanging five's pretty basic, ten's tougher. Heels is nearly impossible. And when was the last time that you saw anybody hang heels twice on one way? Huh? Good on you, Slick. But our story really begins here, with Clash, the young goofy foot on your left, and the appropriately named wingnut on your right. They're longboarders from this current generation. They do nearly everything together. They grew up surfing together. They hang out together every day. They're best friends.
they have only one regret. They missed the magical 60s. They never ride boards under nine feet long. And in matters of nose riding and style, they've got it covered. They don't worry too much about the crowds of this current generation. They've learned combat maneuvers like this in order to survive. Go ahead, Clash. Take a bow. But sometimes they share. And uh, sometimes they don't share. I wondered if it was crowded like this when Donald Takayama, seen here, first began surfing Malibu decades ago. They wondered, but how do you approach a legend? Donald, after all, is a Hall of Fame goofy foot and still considered one of the most influential board builders and surfers on the coast. Donald's close friend, Skip Fry, paddled out. Fry and Takayama go back a long ways, to the early 60s when they helped to rule California surfing. Fry now owns a surf shop in PB called Harry's. Harry, that's his real name. Here's Skip Fry riding an 11 foot six board that he made himself. Still soul smooth after 30 years. A lot of surfers admire Skip Fry, but Wingnut had always wanted to be Skip Fry. This didn't work out too well at first. All Skip wanted to do was go surfing. So when Wingnut showed up on the beach, Fry barely noticed. Wingnut had another idea. He would try a plank of his own. The rails looked okay. The rocker was a little flat. And it was a little bit, uh... <clears throat> Nothing else worked, so Wingnut and Clash decided to try the direct approach. Just paddle up and introduce yourself. They found that Skip and Donald were nice guys. They rode a few waves together. But the ever competitive wingnut couldn't resist challenging Fry to a race that he could never win. On the beach, Clash and Wingnut heard classic stories of safaris to Rincon and points beyond. They watched Chris Olivas make a speed drive in the pocket from second point. almost connect into first point. Other surfers were fun to watch for other reasons.
Skip liked it, and Wingnut liked it. So did an old friend of Malibu's. How many times do you think this guy's been here? Malibu was great, but Skip told Wingnut about other places far to the south with good waves, warm water, and no crowds. Donald had a van parked just up the street that he offered to clash for safari. Clash said that he wasn't old enough to drive, but assured Donald that Wingnut was an excellent driver. Yeah. So they left Malibu and picked up Donald's van, agreeing to meet him at his upcoming luau in Oceanside. Would you allow a man named Wingnut to drive your car? There was only one way to repay Donald for his generosity. They would paint his van and restore it to the glory days of the 60s. It was beautiful and it didn't even cost $99.95. Russell Special, Severson's Motor Skill, and the Magic Bus rolled all into one. It commemorated the legendary surfers and swells that they had only heard about. Attempting to capture the spirit of the era, the boys tried meditation. But all they could do was visualize a beautiful fall day at Trestles and their friend Chris Schroeder out ripping. Schroeder doesn't ride longboards conventionally. He rarely knows rides. His philosophy? Why walk when you can fly? Schroeder's style is termed progressive, is contrasted by traditional or classic. Not every traditional surfer likes it. But it sure makes him feel good. Some shortboarders don't care for longboards at all. But it's hard to argue with any 16-year-old who can put nine feet of raw rail on edge like this.
visualizing surfing is never enough. They needed to get wet. So they headed for Oceanside early that morning. They arrived just after dawn. Donald was already out in the water riding the glassy two to three foot waves. They couldn't wait to show him the van. Boy, was he impressed. Wingnut got into it and right on it with both feet. He had little trouble getting Clash to join him. Being a goofy foot, Clash naturally went left. Here's his version of 10 over. And the drop knee cutback. Wingnut up the ante by going to the nose, turning around, and walking back in reverse. Look easy? Try it. But as usual, the locals got the best ride. Clash retaliated with a heart off the lip. There was good food being prepared on the beach, so Wingnut headed in. Donald, who does most of the cooking for the Oceanside Longboard Club events, went in also. Clash stayed out to practice moves like the side slip. Clash has been drifting around the Oceanside area for some time now. In fact, just last year he took third place in his first ever ASP event, taking down some of the best surfers in the world. Not bad for a kid of 14, huh? Fresh ahi, courtesy of the Oceanside Longboard Club. Clash continued to get down in the clean little shore break. Meanwhile, the hungry predators gathered. This kid not only does the big moves, he can be subtle in his approach also. Check the speed he generates on this little whale. He didn't learn that from any film or magazine. He feels it right down to the soul. Oh, 
Even his little friend from Romper Room was stoked. Donald did most of the cooking. Wingnut and Clash did most of the eating. With fresh fish on the grill, what else would a grommet eat but a hot dog? Some of Donald's friends showed up. They used to call this guy the kid. Now he's simply referred to as Phil Edwards. Rabbit Kikai, the king of Waikiki, was there. Skip Fry, the emperor of PB, was there. Everyone enjoyed the company and the food. Dale Dobson enjoyed the view. Bill Dice was on hand to help out. Go ahead, honey, you go surfing. I'll do the dishes. Oh, the 90s. The surf was fun, but there had to be more. The North Shore would be pumping right now, and Herbie Fletcher would be out putting longboards through their paces there. Herbie Fletcher, he body surfed, so you get a shortboard. You get a shortboard, he gets a longboard. You get a longboard, he gets a jet ski. You get a jet ski, he gets a... 
They had no money for airfare to Hawaii, but they still had Donald's van, and they heard that the waves were coming up. Maybe it would be bigger down south. They decided to check it out. Wouldn't you? So they took the fast track to San Diego and landed there the next day. Flash headed into some good high tide surf while Wingnut went to get a little breakfast. As the tide dropped, the waves hollowed out a bit and he pulled in to the left. He even tried a few rights. When the wave of the day stood up on the reef, Clash was there to find shelter on a clean tube. By the time that Wingnut had returned, they had both satisfied their hunger. Just as they were about to leave, Dale Dobson showed up and gave them a lesson in tube riding. The June gloom had returned, so they decided to leave California and head for the nearest southbound freeway. After crossing the Mexican border, they drove for hours. The crowded city soon gave way to long, empty roads that hopefully would lead to surf. They drove long into the night. The mornings were cold, and with no wood around, the boys became resourceful. stopped along the way to gather supplies. Cherry flavored Gatorade, six packs of Pepsi, and 25 pounds of bimbo bread would get them through anything. met some strange characters along the way. This guy was raving about something. Better not pick him up. With no map and no idea of where they were going, they soon found themselves far from the beaten path. Apparently this old prospector had been in the sun too long. When they offered him a ride, he declined. After they left, he changed his mind. They parked the van and began to walk toward the beach. Little did they know that they were being watched. I'll take the Happy Meal on the left. After a brief walk, they came to a deserted palapa and a nearly empty beach. The water was bright blue, the air temperature was 85, the water nearly 80. Good peaks broke in both directions. They were on it. Wingnut 
Lynette set the pace by pouring himself into a beautiful powder blue wave. Beach and clean mountain peaks were a million miles from home. Flash had ten good reasons to hit the shore break. Wingnut tried the left too, but he didn't hang out for too long. What did Bruce Brown call it? That's right, hang body. They were free and loose with nothing on their minds but the waves at hand. of a beach without people or even footprints on it confused Clash so much that he forgot which end his fins were on. Travel's fun, but Clash missed his little kitty at home. Go ahead, Clash, pet the kitty. But even with his cat-like reflexes, there's no way he should have made this one. After his John Travolta victory dance, Clash decided to exit a winner. The well-balanced wing mat had to get just one more wave. That was fun, said Wingnut. It felt great to beat the crowds of home. Yeah, but I want to get some spitting barrels, said Clash. And so they continued to dream about good, uncrowded lefts and rights. 
deciding to take a chance, they drove along the beach into the sunset and uncertainty. The next morning, they decided to paddle out sight unseen at daybreak, or what the locals call shark feeding time. It was a time of warmth, peace, and lonely waves. But with a thousand miles of uncrowded surf between them and home, Clash decided to shoulder hop wingnut just to stay in practice. Flash did manage to get a few good waves by himself, however. But this is just what Wingnut had been waiting for, a long ride where he could cut loose. Flash proved once and for all that he could surf without anyone behind him. Wingnut nearly spun out with the idea of being able to surf like this. the best place to keep a grommet is right where you can see him. Wingnut's recovery program requires karate kid speed and agility. played cameraman. Wingnut took Clash's advice and decided to get a grip. It helped. Quite a few surfers do fin slides. You do it with this kind of precision. Every shoulder hopper gets his, and here's a little something that Wingnut picked up along the way.
It had been a long time since they had seen waves go by unridden. risk had paid off. They had found what they'd come for. They were almost surfed out. Both surfers agreed that it had been an unreal trip. We've had good waves, now it's time to get Donald's van back. If we leave right now, it should take 24 hours. If not, it could take an entire day, said Clash. Ah, oh, the surf's just starting to get good. I think we should hit it at least one more time, said Wingnut. Wingnut was reacting to the local food and decided to take the last roll of toilet paper and go for a little walk. He would bravely go where no man had gone before. But when he got to the top of the hill, he knew that they weren't going anywhere that day. The tide had dropped, the swell had come up, the point was firing. It wasn't hard to talk Clash into staying a little longer. Knowing that it was their last day, Wingnut pulled out all the stops. Some old friends from home joined them. Flash had some moves of his own. Wingnut executed a perfect 360 without compromising any of his style. Flash threw himself into a clean backside floater. Rapid fire turns and long nose rides in their own warm water point break. Dreams come true.
They had surfed for hours in the warm blue water. It was time to head for home. A solitary surfer paddled out for the last wave of the day. It had been a long trip, filled with unexpected twists and dreams realized. They no longer wanted to go back to the 60s. They knew that these were the times of their lives. They had ridden good waves at Malibu. Seen some of the world's best nose riders. Soul personified. Speed and power from Second Point Malibu. found the color of the 60s. They had met their heroes and made friends for life. Shared the waves with the true locals. I could only imagine what was going on in the islands. They had found some good coverage at home. Run from the city. Into bright blue waves and faraway places. driven away from it all for a while, and discovered that adventure is not so far away after all. There would be others, but they would never forget this safari. Wingnut, as you probably know, went on to become a popular game show host. And Clash went back to school. <laughs> <laughs> 